Hey all, it's singer songwriter Yuzima Phillip. I'm just finishing up my album, Gunnell kind of Project, um, my single and the music um, video short for Seize Your Love. But we're gonna go back into the political realm for a moment. Um, I'm deciding right now what this is about because the amount of time I spent on the album, I didn't do a lot of these videos, even though I said, wow, someone needs to do that, someone needs to do that, someone needs to do that. So I guess this video is going to be on disinformation and how to deal with dense disinformation. It should have been done before and maybe I did do, do it before and forgot because it's been about seven years now since Trump um, arrived on the scene. When it comes to disinformation, first you need to be able to identify it, also propaganda, now, some people use the term misinformation, disinformation. Mm, it's disinformation. Identify it. Be informed about how this information works. A lot of people don't know. Most people think disinformation operates like a standard lie. First of all, most people can't identify the disinformation when they come into contact with it. Because typically the disinformation comes from right-wing figures like Steve Bannon, um, Candace Owens, um, Donald Trump. But sometimes the way it comes across is that it sounds like someone who's just lying. Yeah, they're lies, but they're not just lies. That stuff, they figure that out beforehand and they plan it out. And then they all are going to repeat it over and over and over again. And that's kind of how disinformation and propaganda work, where you have some lies, some black is white, white is black, good is bad, bad is good, nonsense. And then you connect it to a conspiracy theory, and then you sort of say it everywhere. And you have a million people saying it. Donald Trump used to pay. Omarosa said that Donald Trump paid her and other people like $10,000 a month to go on news stations and do what they do. Spread disinformation. Lie. Um, the number one way to deal with this information, this is the most important part of this video, is to not repeat it. If you... And there's a reason for that. You deal with the disinformation by dealing with the person who is spreading the disinformation, um, identifying them, maybe talking about what the disinformation is doing, but not by breaking down what the disinformation is, not by making a video. By the way, they're saying this and this is why it's wrong. No, because the goal of the disinformation is to disseminate, but it, you'll be wrong to think that they actually want to convince people of the disinformation. They don't want to co they convince some people. It's not even convincing. It's like, okay, you're on our side. Or they just hit you upside the head with it until you are brainwashed into it. What they want to do is have, like, let's say there's a sun in the sky. We all know it. We were all born knowing the sun's in the sky. 2003 pops up. All of a sudden, Donald Trump is telling you there's no sun in the sky. And it, it, and you to you say to me saying it now, you're like, oh, that's crazy. But that's how disinformation works. That's exactly what they're doing. Gaslighting you. There's no sun in the sky. Now, but they don't just say it one time. They repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. They find five million ways to say it. Now they're going to sit there and backward, you know, they're gonna come up with fake conspiracies to prove the lie. And generally what they'll do is they'll sort of make it that, oh look, this person won't talk about this. This person won't, you know, they won't give us the room to say the things that we wanna say and they're against this is disinformation, disinformation itself. But they'll make a claim for you know, freedom of speech, whatever, 
anything to create a cloud of suspicion, of confusion and chaos. This, that's what this information is meant to do. So when you engage with it by sitting there drawing up a little list about why it's not true, they're winning. You're sitting there amplifying this information for them. And anyone who has spent seven years fighting them, you should have, or you should already know this. There's a book called um, Fascist, How, How Fascism Works by Jason Stanley. He breaks down, he has a word for it. It's called unreality. That's what they create. They create a world where nothing makes sense and that creates the conditions where they can thrive with lies and with confusion. And what happens is by spreading all these lies, people get exhausted and confused and they tune out and they just go, oh, nothing is true. Hence COVID. They spread so many lies, Donald Trump, the QAnon people, about COVID, it didn't matter that none of the lies made sense with each other. And I'm not gonna tell you, cause I'm not gonna repeat the disinformation, but the lies they made about COVID or they put out there did not comport with each other. They didn't, if one person, if, so you can tell that the people are not serious about what they're saying about COVID. So the unfortunate thing is people believe those lies and they died because they wouldn't get a vaccine. They First, they wouldn't wear masks. Then they wouldn't get a vaccine. And those people put lies out about both. And they put lies out about, this is all from the disinformation. And what can happen is by repeating the disinf disinformation, you strengthen the disinformation. Even, even if you are um, um, sort of disproving it, and you are, um, you know, explaining why it's wrong, you are now creating an atmosphere of chaos along with the purveyors of the disinformation. That's the reason why you have to handle this disinformation with care. So I'm gonna do one of these videos, another one, breaking down all the people who are violating with what I just said. <laughs> there are YouTube influencers you know what, I guess we'll put these videos together. We have, George Taki, he will spread some disinformation. Midas Touch, they will spread this. They have some issues. Fair and balanced, these are all people on our side. But it feels like they are more interested in growing their followings than they are with solving, fighting our enemy, fighting fascism. Because the things that they do, Midas Touch puts out like a gazillion videos in a day in no universe. Is that a good idea? Why? Because our people are already under the influence. Even if you're on our side, or you, let's say you're the average American, you have been hit with so much propaganda from Republicans that you might be tired. So therefore, people on our side need to know how to engage the public so we're not wearing people out um, with endless news stories that we're putting out, you have to be able to differentiate between facts and nonsense that you don't need to do a post about. And if the motive of the post is to grow your following, then you, and we know that YouTube tells you to grow your following, put up posts frequently. Are you putting up these posts because you want to fight the good fight are you putting up these posts because you are trying to grow your following? You need to decide between the two things. Because we're at the, I mean, maybe not the final stretch, but something approaching that. And we need everybody to be fully 
invested and energized. So when it's time to do real things, they have the energy and the attention to do it that they're not being dragged into clickbait on a daily basis, on a minute by minute basis, hour by hour basis, because you are growing your following. <laughs> Remember what the Republicans put out is designed to wear liberals out and wear liberals down. So if you are now um, amplifying that and sort of um, act, um, being um, whatever, activating it or whatever, then you are helping them do that. You're, you're literally being a conduit. We spent so much time getting Donald Trump kicked off of Twitter. Also the same people can sit there every time that nitwit puts up a post, they drag that, screenshot that, and put it on their sites and respond to it. Then they have people who are our energetic soldiers, they now are commenting, I wish he would go away, why doesn't he stop, da, da, da. Yo, stop it. Stop it. Who is this? Midas Touch, stop it. Fair and balanced, stop it. <laughs> you don't need to put up all those posts. I'm, and because, in, you know, what you're doing is you're doing many of times. What's her name? Marjorie Taylor Greene says some ridiculous thing that she's prone to say. These people will lie in the status, in their, um, in the um, title. And the lie will make it look like it's something that isn't. It'll attract the viewer, but then when you watch it, it ain't nothing. You know, it'll, they'll, they'll put a little thing in that gives the impression that someone turned on somebody. And that's what they did with Mar uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Cause I saw it early before I was getting ready to do this and I saw I'm like, oh let me look at this. Because it looks like they're up to it again. Stop it. Stop it. And while we're at it, if you're on Twitter you, and you're still on Twitter, you should be ashamed of yourself. All of you. All of you. I was on because right now I'm promoting Seizure Love. So I have to go to media people. And I happen on um editor for Pitfall and it took me to his Twitter page which is no longer Twitter it's Twitter is now Nazi camp it's Nazi camp this so your um editor for Pitchfork or have your you are Nazi camp and these people are saying oh I don't want to leave Nazi camp because I don't want to lose my following that's like if you have a little lemonade, little lemonade stand in a Nazi head headquarters, you don't want to lose it because you have so many customers <laughs> in a Nazi head headquarters. No, you close your Nazi stand down, and if your business falls, it falls. You'll be able to get by, I promise you. It's like me, when I was on um, Spotify, and I got rid of my Spotify account because of Joe Rogan. I make more in royalties now than I did before. I don't know why, but I do. It just so happens that Spotify, didn't, the royalties from Spotify mean they're like this. Nothing. They're backwards. <laughs> it was in a negative. <laughs> So the karma that you get for doing the right thing is more than enough for you worrying about your fault. You listen, you are you're a disgrace if you're staying on Twitter, whatever the Nazi camp is called now, and you won't get off because of some nonsense reason. You are a disgrace. And you're on our side, you're a disgrace. End of the story. I'm not gonna be nice to you. You're a disgrace. So, yes, this information is not really that complicated. It's just that 
they create an environment of unreality. It's up to us to inform the public that the biggest thing that you can do is not sit there and go, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is right. No, it's to let the public know that they are under constant influence of disinformation from Republicans in QAnon, Putin in Russia, and maybe you do a, hint, a list hinting at what that disinformation is, but you don't go through and break it down. You don't go through. They're making anti-drag queen disinformation and attacking drag queens. The wrong thing to do and trans people. The wrong way to deal with that disinformation is for you to make a little TikTok video explaining how important it is what you do because you're a trans, a, a, a drag queen and how important your life is because you're a trans person. That's the wrong way to deal with the disinformation about those things. Now, let me fine tune that. What I mean is, which I've seen people do, I'm a drag queen. How can they attack? No. Because remember that this information is not to, it's creating a, a, a world of unreality. It's not about facts. So you sit in there going down facts and talking about your feeling. There's a way you can respond, but the first thing you need to do is go and read. You watch this, then read how fascism works because it'll let you know how the disinformation works. So let's say you wanted to do, and we're doing a workshop obviously here, I'm a rock, the rock and roll anti-fascist workshop. So if you were a drag queen and you wanted to do a video fighting the disinformation that, and the inhumane stuff that um, QAnon and Republicans and Trump are all putting out, you can do it, but don't, don't respond to what the disinformation is. This also cross pollinates with what they're saying with the, the slavery thing. Cause no one thinks, no one believes what they're saying. And I'm not gonna repeat what they're saying because then I would be doing what I'm advertising, what I'm saying you shouldn't do. No one actually believes that. So you're ridiculous in there, arguing against something that nobody believes. You have to understand that the root of what fascism is, and this explains it all, is fascist. That is a Latin word for a bundle of sticks tied with an ax in the middle. What does that mean? It means like a bundle of sticks tied are the people, the fascists. They're going to stick together. And the ax is the person who is like Hitler, the leader, or the whole group together, or like Donald Trump. So that tied together means in whether wrong or right, they're tied together. So when they say something to you, and they're not saying it because it's a fact or they believe it. They're saying it because it's kind of like a, it's an emotional, um, 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 sentiment and in fascism sort of words lose their meanings and they take other meanings so the person who is the head propagandist Donald Trump they'll take certain words as we've seen them do it and the word like let's say you say you know and I'm not going to use any of their terms but let's say you say black book to everybody in society, black book means a black book. Let's say you have a propagandist and someone who's president's information. When they say black book, now they're gonna repeat it over and over and over again. And they're gonna attach something emotional to that word. So this black book now becomes the black book. Y'all, you guys are letting the black book do this and the black book is doing it. How it's destroying your life, da da da. Every time you with da 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 da, they're destroying, the, it's demagoguing. It's the, so it's just a black book, but that's how different disinformation and propaganda works. 
So it has nothing to actually do with the facts. It has to do with the rage and emotions and how it's being directed by their leader and the propagandists. And if you've read um, 1984, then you know how um, bad is good, good is bad, fascist disinformation works. Um, rewriting facts. Um, um, all these, let's say it's good to eat vegetables. We all know it's good to eat vegetables. With fascists, they're going to now tell you, oh, real men don't eat vegetables. Real women don't eat vegetables. And they will take it to the grave. Or until they're really, really forced to own up to it. Which is what's happening now with Trump and the trials. That's how this information works. So they take the, the real meaning of the words away and replace it with these emotional um, sentiments that like in 1984, they had something called the two minutes of hate. So every day, the leaders of, what was it, NSOG or whatever from 1984, they blasted out through their um, media, this is who you hate. And for two minutes, all of the people would yell at that person. That's what I remember from 1984. Um, I read it like seven years ago. And I think that's what they yell at everybody who they so it's two minutes of hate. Um, so that's what we're seeing. So one minute, it's the, you want to learn how to take out this information? I'm telling you, listen to me and subscribe and listen to my music. You identify that person. But what they're doing as far as the two minutes of hate is they're jumping from drag queen transgender people, race studies, um, woke. They created that scene. Now, whenever they say the term woke, they're saying some old thing that don't even match what it actually is. <laughs> it's that emotion and sentiment and lying connected to it. And you know, the people who do it, have they do not care one bit about whether it's true. It's about the emotion. So that whole jump from, you know, like group to group that they bully, that is a component. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this up. This information, the key thing, and I hope that I've broken it down. The biggest thing you need to do is read some books, how um, fascism works, 1984, um, can't happen here. Um, Germans, queers, and Germans, queers, and Jews. Great book. Um, Tyrant. I've read a bunch of books. And I just finished reading The Doctrine of Fascism. Because believe it or not, Mussolini explained all this stuff. And that's a little different. I read that. Like, I would never read anything from, like, I have read stuff from the Proud Boys, but I would keep that at a limit of what I'd actually look at. You know, I just, just so I know what is going on, but I won't read propaganda and garbage. These people are traitors to this go. We know that about fascists. But the fascists, they sort of mind people who are broken. That's how they recruit. They, it's almost like the you know crime. They'll get the person who is vulnerable, has like a low self-esteem, or has like a real chip on their shoulder, and that's those are the people who are susceptible to that. Are people who don't have real values. So those are the, that's the moral of the story when it comes to how to deal with this information. Don't repeat it. Don't fight it fact for fact. Just 
expose the person who is spreading the disinformation and in, um, inoculate people from those you know people that's the best thing that you can do you know there probably should be some public service announcements inoculating the american public because the american public has been so inundated over the last seven years with disinformation it's it's affected everybody if you say it hasn't affected you you are delusional because we've heard it all what someone will say today will be different than what they were saying on our side or any side eight years ago there's there just this is there just has been so much this information designed to make people dejected make people angry to trigger emotions and to you know create confusion to make people um like i said dejected so that's sometimes that's what happens when people on our side they share disinformation they say look at what marjorie green is. then you look in the comments what's going on what's happening what it's causing the confusion that the person who created the disinformation wants so stop it thank you for watching listen to my new single seize your love subscribe you see my phil peace